It was a difficult peeling off that layer of rock and roll that oh seems my God. to be on you all the time. And that was, I, dude, thank you for asking that question because that was really, that was the most critical fear that I had of any, of any sort on making this record was when you come off tour with the Eagles of Death Metal, your teeth are sharp. I mean, you're a fucking monster. I mean, really, because it, it, you feel possessed by the spirit and the power of the devil every night, and that's how I feel, man. And so you get, char you know, that shit, you know what I mean? It affects you. You watch a fucking aggressive, you play an aggressive video game and you come off of that fucking wild. And I wanted to go Teddy Pendergrass, you know? I needed to, like, ride Al Green's uh, back into George Clinton town and then butt fucking with Gary Newman using Little Richard as a dick. And it was a weird, you know, it's a very precise battle plan. And uh, Money Mark, I thought, truly would be the only dude who could actually understand me. And he did. I've never met a more amazing producer in a traditional sense and a, a mad scientist, a gifted song. He's like a, he's like Gilbert and Sullivan, dude. And like Paul Williams, pardon me, just imagine like this weird like lowrider, Chicano, like mad scientist who sits at a piano and, and literally you'll be in the studio and his back will be tuned and be like, what do you think of this, Boots? Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, it's like really wild. It was surreal. And, and I thank God that I, I was raised by a mom who taught me to appreciate things when they're beautiful. Like, this is a beautiful job. I'm in fucking Amsterdam talking to you guys on camera. That's pretty cool. You know what but, I mean? But, did, did you need to get away from people like uh, the people you played with in Eagles of Death Metal, like Joe Castillo, who were, you know, really beast, you had really beasts behind you? Well, he and plays on one song, but I had to not get away from them. I had to depend on, upon them differently. Like, I, I used, I needed Joey to inform my, because I really wanted to build these rhythms. And whereas normally in, the, in Eagles of Death Metal, Joshua builds them or Joshua uh, and Joey will build them. I have a, they're, but they're, in Eagles, they're always building versions of my beats. You know what I mean? Because I always make these like, I would always, I've been dabbling in making beats for years and I, that's how I write my songs. I'll make a beat, like a hip hop beat, and then I'll put a rock song on top of it. That's what makes Eagles sound quirky. It's Backman Turner Overdrive on top of a hip hop beat, retranslated by a white dude. Then you get Eagles to death metal. And so on these, it was really part, it was really, really, it was really important to me on these to like actually build it and it be me, good or bad. But Joey is a wizard to me, he's a counselor. So Joey would literally be in the studio a lot. He would be in the studio and I would be, all I would do is come out and he'd be playing basketball at the Danger Bird basketball court with Mark. Like, it doesn't get any more beautiful and classic than that, you know what I mean? It really doesn't. And uh, I'd be like, Joey, check this out. Come listen to this. What do you think? What do I need? And I got that. With Joshua, Joshua was watching me like a fucking hovering angel a lot uh, to make sure nobody came in and fucked with me or whatever. But the most beautiful musical moment on the album is in a song called Dreams Tonight, in my opinion, and, and it's the guitar solo. Because that song, to me, had to be the most beautiful because it's about the girl I'm most in love with. And it was inspired as a direct result of falling in love. And so it became special. And I thought no better way for my best friend and mentor to be on the record in a way that doesn't eclipse me, but also as a, a, a nod of respect to his eminence, it should be the finest musical moment. And I would expect nothing less, it became Joshua. And um, this girl, <laughs> tell me about her. <laughs> in your she, nicest words, please. She's a 21 year old angel. Uh, she's a fucking talent like I've never met in my life who knows music better than any musical historian of the punk rock scene like could possibly imagine and she tried out for my band and made it so she plays bass in my band this tiny little Mexican chick with a big giant Dan Armstrong bass kicking ass and driving and competing with the drummer who's from Snoop Dogg, a big black dude, and then a Rico Suave Cuban dude on guitar. It's a weird looking band. And it's more akin in look to Roxy Music when they first came out than, than Parliament for sure. But <laughs> she's the great love of my life and she inspired three or four of the best songs in this album. And really, 
my pursuit of wanting to give her the shiniest diamond of a song drove, started driving. It was this weird drive, a three-week drive of production value that made me have to go back and retouch up each song and bring it up. And it, it was a challenge, and I really learned that you can actually have a standard in music. You don't just have to like pretend like it happens by accident. You can try to do good, and you can respect the music that you're stealing from and your audience at the same time.